the fuck have I just stepped on? Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing and liking. And thanks for the positive feedback so far, okay? I've met a few of you guys out. And when I've been out of training, and you've given me some good feedback, thanks very much. Now, we're following on from... No. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Um, thanks for subscribing, liking, and all that sort of stuff. Now, uh, also, I want to just say thanks for... No, not thanks. For the fucking BAFTA award. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us again on this channel. Um, thanks for the positive feedback that I'm getting so far. It's quite uh, quite uplifting, to be fair. Now, um, also, congratulations to the guys that passed their CBTs or completed their CBTs this week. And also the four students that passed their Mob 1 test this week. Now, we're coming on from more uh, element B of the CBT. The machine checks, controls, um, daily checks, and periodic checks. Now, this is a periodic checks one. No. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Um, thanks for all the positive feedback that I'm getting at the moment. I've met a few of you when I've been out of training, and you've actually been quite quite nice. I don't know if you're just saying that to, to my face or, or what, but thanks anyway. Now... Just want to say a special shout out to four students that passed their test this week. Um, also, all the guys that completed their CBTs this week. You've been fantastic. I've had a really good week. Um, but this is continuing from the CBT element B of the machine checks. Okay, so this is just a gloss over of your periodic checks. We've done a bolts checks, a brakes, oil, lights, tyres, steering, suspension. Um, and now we're on to the periodic checks. Now, the periodic check would be more for your people um no hey welcome back thanks for joining me again thanks for subscribing liking my channel and all that sort of stuff um just want to say thanks for the older people it's uh Give me good feedback so far. I've met you when I've been out of training and it's been quite positive, really. Thanks, whether you're being nice to my face or, or what, but I still appreciate it. Um, also, congratulations to the four students that have just passed their, their test this week and the uh, CBT guys that have done their CBTs this week as well. They've been fantastic. We've had a really good week, um, not financially, but successfully, you've all been really great students. As I always get. Now we're following on from element B of the CBT, which is the controls and checks and all that sort of stuff. So we've done the daily checks, now we're on sort of periodic checks. Now, as a general rule, if you're a fair weather rider, you'll probably do these checks before you ride your bike on a nice sunny day. If you're a commuter, you're using your bike every day and it's the only form of transport you've got, then this is the checks that I'd recommend you do once a week when you have a day off, a bit of spare time. Now, these periodic checks are checks where you go through the whole bike, making sure it's all nice and safe. So we've done the bolts checks, brakes, oil, lights, tyre, steering and suspension, which you do while you're doing these periodic checks. Um, and what I tend to do with my periodic checks, this one isn't that clean at the moment. It's been used all last week, um, but tomorrow I've got a day off, so I'll give it a good old clean up and then I'll go through them checks. And what I tend to do when I clean them is I'll use a bucket and sponge or a hose pipe and rinse them all down. I don't use a pressure washer. Now, the pressure washers seems like an easy option, but to be fair, the pressure washers can be a bit too brutal for the bikes and they will blow bearings or blow grease out the bearings off the chain and all that sort of stuff. Um, they'll also possibly get into the electrical system and make problems with the electrical system. So to be honest, you want to get right in amongst it, get your hands dirty, and get right amongst it and give it a good thorough clean up with a bucket and sponge, scrubbing brush, whatever, um, and then rinse it off with a hose pipe. You don't want to force water in places where it shouldn't be going. So, with regards to the periodic checks, what we tend to do, or what I tend to do, is that once I've cleaned it and got it all looking nice again, what I tend to do is I have a method to working on this. Now, what I tend to do is start off on the handlebar here, the right handlebar. And I'll make sure the throttle works nice and freely, okay? So it's quite snappy there. 
so it snaps back. Sometimes it can get fouled up, can get a bit dirty in there, can wear a bit, and you might have a cable that's sort of frayed and sticking, so you want to make sure that's all working nice and freely. Okay, then we come on to the front brake. Now, with the front brake, we've done a brakes, brakes uh, check back on the bolts check videos. Okay, and with this brake lever, I'll put it right in real hard and make sure that none of the levers going to snap or break. So it might have fallen over in the garage and somebody might have picked it up. Coming across to here, we've got all the switch gear, so I'll make sure your electric start works and turns off. I'd make sure your, in, your hazard light switch works on this one. Okay, it is located on the right-hand side. On to the, the dials here. So I check that all this is working, all nice and illuminated. Make sure that your ABS light goes off if you do start riding it. So on this particular model, the ABS light and the oil light will come on. But once you start it up, they should go off. Okay, so that all works nice and freely. You come across to here, checking your mirrors nice and secure. So I'm moving that and the handlebars are moving. So that's nice and secure and nice and clean. Switch gear here, high and low beam, horn, indicators, left and right, all work nice and freely. Okay, clutch cable, clutch lever. Okay, so I'm making sure that the clutch is nice and free as well. Sometimes that might need lubricating. Okay, it doesn't need lubricating very often, but it will need lubricating every now and then just to make it a bit more smoother. Then what I do, I work my way down through the front of the bike, down the forks, okay, checking any cables in and around the headstock here, checking all the cables are not frayed or cratching or kink or anything, and there's no um, wires sticking out. Down onto your forks, making sure your forks are all in good condition. Again, it goes down and returns nice and freely, and there's no oil leaks or anything like that. Onto your wheels and your tyres, your brake disc, and all that down on the front. So you're just checking all through that again, checking the brakes like you did it like I did in the bolts videos, a brake pads disc onto the front tire, making sure the front tire is all good. Okay, well, while we're down there, we can check the head race or the, the wheel bearings. So what I do with the wheel bearings is I'd have it on a paddock stand. I turn that turn the, the the wheel right away to full lock and just see if there's any play in that wheel. Okay, and then the bearings are worn out or anything. It can be a common one, especially if you ride on the roads that we got at the moment with the all the potholes about. I'd come down through the front there, making sure the headlight's not damaged in any way, shape or form. Through the side here, or down through the front on the right hand side, making sure, again, brake pads and checking that side of the tyre suspension. Back through the side here, making sure that he... It's all over the fucking place. Let's get a fucking Red Bull. <clears throat> hey everybody welcome back to the channel again thanks for joining me thanks for the positive feedback that i'm getting at the moment it's quite here quite an eye opener that so many people have seen it um just want to say well done to all the guys that passed their test this week and all the guys that done their cbt you've been a great bunch it's been a real easy week for me you've all seemed to have got on really well and done brilliantly um on to the next stage so we got this week we've got a fairly busy week again now on this video we're following on from the element b of the cbt the bolts checks and the periodic checks okay so in this video we're just going to go through what i i would personally do when i go through the periodic checks which is once a week With regards to that what i do suggest is if you're a fair weather rider which i'd prefer to be rather than riding the crap weather um then you normally do this before you take your bike out okay you normally go for it clean it up make sure it's all nice and pristine you go through the whole lot making sure it's all safe before you ride it and take it on your journey and running sweeter than that 
regards to commuting to work every day, if you're using your bike every day and you're using it in all the crap weather and all that sort of stuff, then what I do recommend is to give it a clean up once a week. Now, when you do clean them, what I do say is clean them with warm soapy water and a hose pipe. Don't pressure wash them. The reason for not pressure washing is because with pressure washing, it is quite forced water and it can get into the electrical system. It's getting forced in where it shouldn't be going in. Whereas a hose pipe will sort of sprinkle on it and it won't be forced in places which it shouldn't get to. As well as that, with pressure washing, you can sometimes blow the grease out the bearings and the wheels, blowing the grease off a chain and all that, and just making it not work as well as it should do. So ideally, stay off a pressure washer, clean it with warm soapy water, bucket and sponge, and a hose pipe. So regards to your periodic checks you still do the same checks as what we went through on the bolts checks of brakes oil lights tire steering suspension um, but on this one you're going to go more in depth into it now going more in depth i normally have a system that i work to when i do check these bikes over and those checks are actually starting off once i've cleaned it starting off from this right hand handlebar and what i'll do is make sure the switch the throttle works nice and free sometimes i can get a bit stiff sometimes a cable can fray in here okay and it'll stick open you might have cruise control turn the handlebars as well when you do it sometimes this could pinch you up and it might stick on throttle when you turn right or left so making sure that all works nice and freely you're going to check your brake okay same method as when you do your bolts checks your brakes checks on the bolts checks so with this lever i'll put it right back in as hard as it'll go making sure that it's a good positive feel again and not breaking no brakes or anything in the in the lever Come across to here, we've got the switch gear, okay, so I'm checking that the bike starts freely and you can switch it off with the emergency stop button or engine kill switch. Switch down here on this particular one has hazard lights down here, so I check the hazard lights will work. Coming up to here, I check the mirror is nice and secure and it's not wobbling around or anything and making sure they're clean. You come across to fluid, okay, so you're coming onto the fluid, making sure that you've got decent fluid in there and there's plenty of fluid in there, you haven't got any leaks there. Come across to the screen here, so we've got the dials in here. Tells you what speed you're doing, so you use your revs, your gear indicator, how much fuel you got, how many miles you got left, and all that sort of stuff. So you check all that works. All your idiot lights down here, making sure they all work. Okay, it's very important, particularly if you're riding along and the red oil light comes on. Now, this red oil light, if it comes on, stop your bike immediately and make sure that you've got plenty of oil in there. Sometimes with this one, it's got your oil light on now, and then the ABS light on as well. It won't go off until I actually start the bike up and start moving on this one. The ABS will go off, but the oil light will go off as soon as I start it. I'm going to turn the key off so I don't drain the battery down. Now I'm following my way across to the left-hand side of the handlebar, or left-hand side of the bike. I'm going to check the indicators all work nice and freely. Checking the horn works. High and low beam work on this one. You've got your flashing light here. Okay, that all works. Checking your clutch cable as well. Checking you've got a good feel on your clutch. Now with your clutch on this one, it's a cable clutch, so what you might need to do is lube up that cable every now and then, all right? Mirror on this one's nice and secure. As you can see, I'm moving it, and it's moving the handlebars slightly. Hopefully you can see that. Then I'll work my way down through the front here. Now we've got cables down through here in the headstock, okay? So we're checking that none of them are pinching, none are worn out. It does turn quite a lot, especially on these particular bikes because they're training school bikes. We do figure of eight U-turns, and it's quite tight turns. So we're checking none of the cables are frayed or damaged or anything like that and pinching up. We come down through the front here, making sure your indicators are nice and secure. And then we come down through onto your forks, making sure there's no oil leaks, making sure your forks work properly so they go down and return nice and freely. Put your hose down there as well for your brakes, making sure there's no leaks coming out. And then we come down to your brake calipers and your brake disc, making sure that your pads are good, good condition, still got plenty of wear and life left in them. Onto your disc, making sure your disc is all good as well, okay? Not damaged in any way, shape, or form. We come onto the wheels then, okay? Wheels and tyres. So we'll check the tyres, regular thing, checking the tyres, making sure you've got at least one millimetre tread over three quarters of the tyre. Um, and they do have the wear bars, the TWI tread, tre tread wear indicators on in between the tread. With regards to the wheels, you're going to make sure that the wheels are good, okay? So your wheel bearings are good. So what I'd personally do is put it on a paddock stand, lift the wheels up and then try and rock the wheel and see if there's any movement there and make sure the bearings are all in good condition. I'll also try and lift it up a little bit and see if there's any knocking there, making sure those 
wheel bearings are all good and true. Then we come back on this side, so we go through the same method again. So we're checking the brake pads, brake discs, caliper, brake hose as well. Um, coming through to the front here, we're checking the exhaust, making sure the exhaust is in good condition. Now on these bikes, what normally happens is either your fork seals or your exhaust will be the first thing to go, especially your exhaust. Now your exhaust is down low, it gets all the crud and all that from the road, go up onto it and just rot the exhaust pipe out, okay, especially if it's a a cheap exhaust that you've got on there. So you're checking for any any leaks coming out of the exhaust. Then we come down to the side here. Okay, so we come down for the engine and we're checking for any water leaks, coolant leaks, petrol leaks, or oil leaks. Okay, anything leaking out of there, making sure everything's nice and secure and how it should be. We come on to the brake lever, making sure that's a good positive fill when you push that down. So you want to push that down quite hard and make sure it does work sufficiently. Come across here, making sure all these pegs are in good condition. Now, again, these bikes get dropped on a regular basis, so it is important to make sure that all them, there's no hairline fractures or anything there. So I will push on that quite hard and make sure that nothing's actually moving there too much. Coming across to here, we're checking all the hoses and everything here, making sure there's no leaks or anything coming out. Checking all the bolts are all where they should be. There's no missing bolts or anything. If there's a bolts missing, then you replace them. Back to here. So we're checking a brake caliper, brake pads, and disc again. Okay, then back onto this wheel here. So we've got the wheel, we've got it on the paddock stand at the moment. So what I do is just give it a little tweak like that and make sure that there's no knocking and then lift it up and down again, making sure that there's no knocking in the bearings on the wheel. Coming around here, got this tail, tail piece and the number plate on making sure your indicators are nice and secure and all this is nice and secure so there's nothing ready to fall off with your with your lights on here i did clean these off the other day because they were getting a bit dirty inside somehow water was getting in there dirt's getting in there so i did clean the lenses off so across the side here we have got the chaining sprockets which i'll do in a minute um and then we come across to the left hand side of the bike again checking that everything's working as it should be so making sure the stands are working the switch on the stands working uh, making sure everything's lubricated as it should be and then onto the engine making sure the engines no water leaks cooling leaks and anything from this side okay and then we come back to where we started so that's what i basically do is just just go around the whole bike making sure everything's lubed it should be lubed making sure everything's secure like it should be and making sure that everything's tight and how it should be okay like i say we'll come to chain and sprocket in a minute um and there'll be a better shot of the chaining sprockets and how to adjust it. But with regards to this, the best thing to do is just check your owner's manual and see what you need to check and what needs doing on a regular basis. Um, but that's just my advice is just go around the bike, checking the whole lot. And I've got a method that I work to rather than going from here to here to here to here and going all over the place. I just, as I go around here, I'm just following everything and covering everything as I go around. All right. So we'll go on to the chaining sprockets next. We'll have a look at chaining sprockets and adjusting them. I'm not going to adjust them. I'm just going to hopefully explain how to adjust them. Different bikes have different methods. I mean, you know, this is your conventional standard thing that you adjust on this one. This is what most bikes are like. So I'll go through that in a sec and we'll cover that basis. All right. So let's do the, the chaining sprockets. 